Uh, we're uh, at six o'clock. I'm going to call the. Uh, oh, oh, she got. Hold on, we got to turn on the recorder. Are we ready? Okay, it's six o one. I'm going to call the March twentieth, twenty twenty three uh, Planning Commission meeting to order. Um. That's where I start. Um, Madam Clerk, will you please do a roll call? Commissioner Glenn? Here. Commissioner Allen? Here. Commissioner Kendig? Here. Commissioner Fernandez? Here. Commissioners Cohn, Rubio, and Scoggin are all excused, and we have a quorum. Okay. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Any objection to approving the agenda as written? Hearing, hearing seeing on uh, agenda is approved. The, oh, okay. So we're going to have the posting of the colors and Pledge of Allegiance to be performed by um, City Air Patrol based out of Birchwood Composite Squadron. And I would suggest that we please welcome Cadet Senior Master Sergeant Jack Parker from the Alaska Wing Civil Air Patrol Birchwood Composite Squadron. Cadet Parker will narrate tonight's posting of the colors and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remain standing as cadets from Civil Air Patrol's Birchwood Composite Squadron Color Guard Team post our nation's color. The team is led by Cadet Commander First Lieutenant Reagan Benedict and supported by Cadets Chief Master Sergeant Benjamin Parker, Staff Sergeant Laura Tolbert Nielsen, Senior Airman Elizabeth Barnett, and Senior Airman Robert Bressler. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jerry, go. Right shoulder, arm. Right, this. Forward, march. Thank you. Thank you.
the Lord tonight to bring that. I, I make a motion. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. I need a motion for approval of agenda. I'll move for approval of agenda. You got a second? I'll second that. Any discussion? Any, no, sir. Any objection? Hearing, seeing none, motion carries. Any additions or changes? Oh, no, any objection. Hearing, seeing none, motion carries. Consent agenda. Where, where's the consent agenda? Where, where am I at? Where's the consent agenda? Okay. Minutes, regular meeting minutes, March 6th, 2023. Introduction for public hearing, quasi-judicial matters. Introduction for public hearing, legislative matters. Any objection to approving the consent agenda is written. Hearing, seeing none, consent agenda is approved. Uh, do we have any committee reports? Agency and staff reports. None. Land use classification. Well, that brings us to audience participation. And you, uh, you, uh, audience participation, we, you have three minutes uh, to speak to anything that's not on the agenda. Um, and if when you do come up and speak, if you would give, uh, give your name and spell it. The clerk is bringing up the sign up sheet now. And keep in mind, this is for anything that's not on the agenda at this time. Uh, Father Randy Hillman. Thank you, members of the planning committee, and allow me to speak. I'm speaking to you today for consideration of uh, the, what would ha be happening to the borough in the future. And that is uh, the carbon credits and sequestration of uh, at least 180 acres of forest land someplace here in the borough. Don't know where. I've been asking for the uh, the plat of the overlay of um, what's going to, where it's going to be in the proposed site, but I have not received that yet. But I'd like to put, you, put in your mind what the impact will be if the uh, carbon sequestration credits uh, and storage of it, what the impact on this uh, borough and will, will, will the land be used and cultivated? And can the trees be harvested for the land? Various questions that yet to be answered on that. Um, Representative uh, Kevin uh, McCabe had a pretty good article about it and the um, Alaska Wasserman but it didn't have all the facts and data on it. It was just uh, gone by what they was told in the uh, uh, in the Senate, I'm sorry, House of Representatives. But all those individuals that were spoke at that particular he hearing was uh, individuals who were hired by lobbyists and or other uh, entities to speak and no one was able to speak to uh, common uh, members of the public. So I'm asking you to uh, keep your mind's eye and try to do some little research on it, on EG, ESG uh, and how the World Economic Forum is going to be played in this situation. Thank you. Bye. Kevin, we have anybody online? Okay. Um, 
with that, I'll close um, public testimony. I mean, oh, excuse me, audience participation. Um, I'll entertain a motion uh, for resolution 23 07. 2303 first. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, it, they got it backwards on here. Okay. I'll entertain a motion for 2303. That is a re resolution of the manager who sit in the borough planning commission recommending the approval of an ordinance amending. MSB 17.55 and MSB 17.80 to allow buildings to be built within a 75 feet of a water body. I can get staff report. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, staff report, please. Oh, we don't have the motion in a second yet. So, um, I think I can do a, a staff report and then there's a motion to adopt afterwards. Okay. Yep. So, um, so uh, good evening, uh, Alex Strawn, planning director for the Matsu Borough. Where am I? The ordinance that is before you okay. uh, for recommendation is, uh, was requested by uh, two assembly members, assembly member Yunt and assembly member two are co-sponsoring this legislation. Um, what the, what it essentially does is uh, allow homes to be built within 75 feet of a water body, whether they be lakes or streams, and um, uh, essentially grants forgiveness to all the structures that have been built prior to adoption of this ordinance. It... Uh, but going forward, if somebody were to uh, construct a home or a habitable structure within 75 feet of a water body, they would have to hire an engineer to uh, essentially do a geotechnical analysis of the soils, structural analysis of the building that's being proposed, and then uh, protect ground and uh, or surface and subsurface water quality, come up with a plan to do that. So we, when this ordinance was written, we, we got a lot of requests for information, uh, one of which was how many structural setbacks or setbacks violations do we have currently here in the borough? Because it does, it is a consideration in this. We, I had our GIS department do an analysis of how many setback violations just to lakes there are um, uh, within the borough and the, the number was around 750. So that does not include uh, violations to water body or to uh, lakes and streams. Um, and just to give you a little bit of a history, this is a 50 year old ordinance. It was, there was originally a 75 foot water body setback adopted in 1973 by the borough assembly. And then in 1986, it was rolled back to 45 feet. And then in 1987, there was a vote of the people of the borough is actually a referendum uh, on whether to bring it back to 75 feet, and that did pass. Uh, and it's been at 75 feet ever since. Um, so again, this would, this would grant relief to all the people that are built within 75 feet, um, and then um, allow a path forward if somebody wants to build closer than 75 feet in the future. So I did include in the informational memorandum a, uh, a 1998 analysis of water body setbacks within the borough. I hope you had an opportunity to read it. I, I included it in the informational memorandum because I think it's still very relevant today. It gives a good uh, synopsis of sort of the history of setbacks, uh, some of the problems associated with water quality uh, for developments that are developed too close to water bodies. Um, one of the things it does say is that 75 a 75 foot setback just for a structure is not really adequate to protect water bodies. And, but that's the road we went down. Um, really in order to protect water quality, you need to have some sort of riparian buffer to provide some sort of filtration for any pollutants that might be caused from development to provide uh, shade for water bodies, uh, uh, and, and essentially, uh, uh, that's what's required to protect fish. Uh, under this ordinance, I think if um, 
somewhere to, someone were to develop within 75 feet of water body, we would be looking at uh, swales, rain gardens, uh, riparian buffers, things like that, uh, that an engineer would have to d design in order to protect that surface and subsurface water quality. It's not specifically listed in here, but uh, that that is how we'd sort of implement that going forward. Um, and this is scheduled to go to the assembly in April. So that's, uh, that's my staff report. I'm sure there's gonna be questions. Uh, this did go through the Fish and Wildlife Commission. They do have a resolution that's in the packet uh, that's definitely worth a read. Um, they're, they're definitely recommending some modifications to this ordinance going forward. So with that, I'll answer any questions. Um, we should get a motion. Okay. Um, for discussion purposes, um, I'll move uh, that we discuss resolution 2303. So I'm, I'm sorry to do this, but before we actually make a motion, I think you want to hear from the public, have a public hearing, and, okay. then, and then you hold up, you, okay. you make a motion. All right. Sorry, I'm getting out of line here. Uh, so we'll open the public hearing uh, for resolution 2303. The clerk is grabbing the sign-up sheet now. Where was the sign-up sheet? If you didn't get, I'll, I'll ask if anybody... I would ask that anybody who gets up and speaks, please uh, state your name, your last name, and spell it for the record, please. Mike Wood. I'm uh, Mike Wood, W-O-O-D. Um, so good evening, members of the Planning Commission, and thank you for this opportunity to testify. Uh, my name is Mike Wood, and I'm the chair of the Matsu Fish and Wildlife Commission. I've been asked by the commission to speak tonight um, on this proposed ordinance changes to the current water body setback code. Specifically, I want to summarize our resolution, Fish and Wildlife Commission 23-01, that the commission passed unanimously on February 2nd. This resolution can be found on page 64 of your meeting packet. The Matsu um, Fish and Wildlife Commission was formed in 2007 to advise the borough and other regulatory agencies on the interests related to fish and wildlife. And we are proud to have worked diligently on representing the interests of the Matsu regarding fish and wildlife and utilizing data and science to inform our actions. We are concerned about the impacts of the proposed changes on the water body setback requirements on the fisheries and wildlife of the Matsu. In review, resolution 23-01 does the following. First, it details the history of the borough's wetland water or water body setback code, including how it was restored by voter initiative after being suspended briefly in the 1980s. Two, the document, uh, do, it documents the significant investments that to enhancing fisheries habitat in the borough to the tune of millions of dollars. Three, it shows the major economic impact of healthy fisheries and what it has done for the borough via sport fishing from the studies complete that from the studies we had done that were completed in 2007 and 2017. And four, it emphasizes the importance of shoreline habitat. And not only in terms of fish and wildlife, but also regarding clean water and flood protection, all of which on current water body setback codes uh, helps protect. Finally, resolution 23-01 uh, recommends the following. One, keep the current 75 water body, 70 foot water body setback code and instead tweak it a little to improve it. Two, recognize that the current water body setback violations do need a pathway to compliance, and we suggested ways to achieve that down the road. Three, recommend, it recommends instituting a mandatory land use permit as a vehicle for avoiding further violations. Um, the Matsu Borough and Fish and Wildlife Commission opposes the proposed changes to the water body setback on draft 23-002 and instead offers solutions to any issues in current code 
that simultaneously protect our fish and wildlife that have helped to create the good quality of life that we enjoy here in the Matsu Borough. So on behalf of the Matsu Borough Fish and Wildlife Commission, thank you for taking this testimony tonight and I'm open to any questions you may have and I'll be sitting here if something just happens to come up, but thank you for your time. Thank you. Camden Yill. Did I pronounce that right? And, and Mr. Chair, just I just want to point out, uh, I did allow five minutes for that speaker because he was representing a board. Okay. Um, so. Hello, uh, my name is Camden Yaley, uh, spelled Y-E-H-L-E. -E. Uh, this is Jack, who's my testimony buddy for the evening. And uh, I am speaking on behalf of the Meadow Lakes Community Council. Uh, we, at our last meeting on March 8th, the membership voted to submit these comments. Uh, uh, we oppose the reduction of the water body setbacks for structures. Our three main concerns are the following. All right, let me pick you up and then you can see. Number one, we have a legitimate existing process for applying for variances for to code regarding setbacks. Uh, any projects capable of engineering safeguards can already prove them with their engineers and reduce the setbacks if approved. Uh, number two, if there are contaminated water uh, drainage concerns with roof runoff, grass fertilizer, fuel, and oil from pavement. If structures are closer to water bodies, there's less room for natural infiltration before reaching and, uh, reaching and contaminating water bodies, as you were discussing, Alex. All right, I got to read point number three here. All right, three is reduction of setback would reduce wildlife habitat in critical riparian buffer zones, which you were discussing. Those were our top three other people had lots of other concerns about this, including <laughs> that's our microphone, Jack, uh, less attractive community with buildings right on the shoreline with no trees. Uh, again, we we're representing uh, uh, the Meadow Lakes Community Council, so it's going to have a big effect on on us. It, it could change the whole look of Meadow Lakes, this one ordinance. All right. What else have we got? OK, catering to engineers and people who have already violated the code uh, doesn't make any sense to a lot of our membership. Uh, it would encourage more out of code building. Uh, uh, oh, um, the borough has such limited resources to, in the public works department already. Uh, we weren't sure how exactly they were supposed to review plans. <laughs> <laughs> um, because there doesn't seem to be anything in there of adding staff or money or anything to uh, support their work. And I would say that sums it up for now. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you. Did we get it, Jack? Yeah. Patty Fisher. Okay. Hello, I'm Patty Fisher, F-I-S-H-E-R. Um, I am speaking tonight in opposition to the change in the water body setback ordinance. I was gonna give you a little history and then Alex took most of it away and so did Mike. But I will add one thing. I thought it was amazing when I read about the history, the assembly reduced the setback in November of 86. Six months later, only six months later, there was an initiative on the ballot in May of 87 that returned the setback to 80 to 75 feet. So in six months, people got an initiative together and getting an initiative together is not an easy process. You have to get signatures, you have to get it arranged through the borough to get it on the ballot. When the vote came in, it was two to one against going to 45, in favor, two to one in favor of keeping it at 75 feet. So I think that tells you a little bit about, I know that's a few years back, 
but that tells you a little bit about the borough sentiment. So going on to that, I live on a lake and I have a strong interest in protecting the lakes that we have here in the valley. They are beautiful. They're already suffering from pollution, runoff from lawns that are heavily fertilized, septic seepage and road chemicals. So I urge you to not make this change. I know the DEC has said that 75 feet is marginal for a, a, a septic and water sewage system. Um, any changes to lower that level are problematic. This change we are discussing today is distressing in another, in another way. It, it caters to those who have money. The ordinance specifies that you can build closer to 75 feet if you can pay for plans designed and constructed by a professional engineer and then obtain a land use permit from the borough. In other words, if you have the money, you can live a little closer to the lake. I, find this objectionable. Please protect our beautiful Matsu Valley and reject this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Peter Probasco. Okay, good evening and through the chair, my name is Peter Probasco, P-R-O-B-A-S-C-O. And I'm here to speak in opposition of reducing the 75 foot setback on water bodies. And I want to stress that the 75 foot is viewed as a minimum. I bring to you over 41 years of managing fish and wildlife and habitat resources throughout the state of Alaska, both for the state of Alaska, as well as the federal government, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The riparian habitat or near shore habitat is so essential, not only for fish and wildlife, but also for the quality of the water that we rely on for to living as well as propagating our community. I cannot stress enough how important the immediate riparian habitat is to meeting those goals and objectives. Eliminating that type of quality has an impact not only on the fish and wildlife, but us as well. So I ask you to carefully review um, the ordinance that, or the resolution that was put forth on the Fish and Wildlife Commission. I also sit uh, as a member of that. That body has a lot of experience, many years of experience in managing both habitat and fish and wildlife. I'm speaking here on behalf of myself and I encourage you to look at that resolution. One other piece of information possibly to review and maybe Alex can provide it, is the Kenai Borough went through the same thing and they resulted in significant changes to the riparian habitat and building within um, near shore areas. Thank you. Thank you. Tyler Mayer. Good evening, I'm Tyler Murray, M-A-R-Y-E. I'm a homeowner in District 1. Uh, I come before you today to speak in opposition against this ordinance. Um, I knew today a lot of people would be speaking about fish and wildlife um, and they make great points. Um, but one thing we forget is this impact on humans. We've heard water quality, um, but I think what needs to be expanded on is the flood potential. Um, I come with 12 years of experience working with aquatic resources in Colorado, in Mexico, Oklahoma, and now here in Oklahoma, or <laughs> Alaska, excuse me. Um, even though I come here just on a personal uh, thing, I like to share some expertise. When you degrade the watershed, you risk the chances of flooding. So that impacts us homeowners, home insurance claims go up, property values, everything is impacted, and more in co costs go up. And I, I know for most people here, I'm sick of having costs go up with inflation and just the world we live in now. Um, and by this, when you degrade the watershed, you risk inc incising the rivers. Um, so incised rivers it re uh, mean increased flows. That usually leads to increased culverts being washed out and cities, boroughs, counties, having to replace those. Um, 
So in terms of the flood control and flood mitigation that these riparian areas offer, um, I would just Google land development and flooding. Um, there's a lot of good resources online. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Eileen Probasco. Hello, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm Eileen Probasco, and I'm coming here representing myself, but I was uh, um, employed here at the borough for 19 years, and uh, probably at least seven or eight of it as the, the planning director. So um, I have, uh, I had so many thoughts going through my head when I heard this ordinance coming up, and I, I, I decided just to focus on what my, um, my best understanding and interest was uh, in the in the planning realm. So, uh, most of you have um, financial planners or, you know, uh, a plan for retirement. Uh, I know when Fish and Game makes their um, their recommendations and makes their laws for fishery allocations, they uh, they craft a, a management plan that says here's what you need to do to reach all the goals, and then they implement that plan. Well, the borough has, um, if you look at Title 15, probably close to 100 plans that have been crafted for some fashion, um, many of them like management plans. I think there's 41 or something like that. Uh, so I bet close to 100 plans that the borough itself has adopted making recommendations. And, and as I was looking through them, I, I couldn't even think about listing them because I didn't have enough time and I didn't think you folks would be interested in the minutia. But um, I think that the key thing is the comp plans um, implement things like where your roads are supposed to go, where your schools are supposed to go, how you protect your resources, your water quality, your air quality, the dust and things like that. So this ordinance that, be, that was brought forward by the assembly and referred to you just flies in the face of going against everything that has, you know, the, the borough has said, here's what we're gonna do to make our place a cool place to live and raise our kids. Um, at, uh, I went to the Fish and Wildlife Commission meeting, and uh, Mr. Yet was in a, attendance, and and so he was asked, you know, well, you know, what was your interest in bringing this forward? And he, he, because there was nothing really in the background or in the ordinance itself that says why are we doing this, and um, he he said that it was to bring some relief and some kind of mechanism for some variation to just the mandatory 75 foot setback. And I get that, I get that. I don't, I don't disagree that there should be something in place. So as we were looking through um, the options, you can either support the ordinance as it's drafted, which I'm not recommending, um, nor is the Fish and Wildlife Commission. You can um, um, you know, adopt the resolution that's in front of you, which would recommend its uh, adoption of the ordinance. Um, but if you look on page, um, page 67 of your packet and, and look at the, the therefore be it resolves from the Fish and Wildlife Commission. Um, we resolve that, um, well, first of all, the Fish and Wildlife Commission opposes the adoption of the ordinance. We recommend that the commission recommends the assembly fail the ordinance in its current format. And they further recommend that, direct, uh, that the assembly should direct staff to come up with some regulations that would, uh, I'll, I'll finish up here keep the water body set back, um, recognize that the bor borough wishes to provide a reasonable op option for resolution of previous and potential future water body setback violations, um, and, and offer, a, offer a mechanism for those to be resolved um, and you know, bring their, their home or whatever their violation is into compliance. And I think that the thing that people don't really wanna do is recognize that that's probably gonna cost some more staff time, but I mean, you can either, leave it as it is, um, do something completely different, or at least try and accommodate what Mr. Yunt shared, that they would like to have some type of a mechanism to provide relief for those violations. So if you look at that page uh, 67 and 68, those um, be it resolved from the Fish and Wildlife Commission, in my recommendation, um, I think they're a good option. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Jean Holt. Good evening, uh, Chairman and members of the Matsu Borough Planning Commission. 
My name is Jean Holt. I live on Finger Lake since 1981. I have been involved with this important water setback order, ordinance of Bureau Code since 1986 and water quality monitoring my husband and I on Finger Lake in Lake Louise. I was involved in a study group and lake management plan for Lake Louise in the past, along with uh, um, giving comment along with the uh, numerous violations of setbacks on various lakes over the years. First off, I would like folks to realize, as you stated, Chairman um, or Planning Director, uh, that I would like folks to realize that if, if they don't, that this is the year 2023 is the 50th anniversary, the um, bicentennial of the 75 foot water setback within the Matsu borough. This ordinance is the only regulation law that enforces water protection of all waters within the Matsu borough. So let's recognize this achievement, lasting achievement for water quality. Sadly though, the Matsu residents are having to continue to defend water protection of our water bodies. There's no justification for the proposed assembly ordinance 2303 to reduce the water body setback of 75 feet that maintains water quality of all Matsu waterways. That is proposed ordinance 2303 does it. It covers up and eliminates all existing violations that are non-compliance in the borough. Then it also allows future buildings of homes to be built within the 75 feet setback of the property. If the property owner hires a certified engineer and adapts best management practices. These practices presently are not enforceable or regulated within the Matsu borough at this time, but are just voluntary that exist now and for the future. These best management practices have no backbone since they are voluntary. The coup de grace is this proposed ordinance uh, 2303 would be able to reduce the only legitimate tool that exists, 75 foot setback ordinance and build a home within the 75 feet setback of the borough, borough code. The written comments submitted to the borough planning department on the proposed ordinance are comments from Alaska agencies, DEC, Matsu Fish and Wildlife Commission, formed by the borough and individuals, all are adamantly stating do not reduce the set water body setback. There is much concern that the borough planning commission and assembly will fast track this proposed ordinance 2303. I ask that the planning commission fail this proposed ordinance 2303 and have the planning department reevaluate their findings on their proposed ordinance 2303. It does not meet the borough's water quality and its concerned Valley residents. Thank you for the opportunity to comment. And if you have any questions, please ask. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else uh, in the audience that would like to give some testimony that's had, that didn't sign up? Just state your name and spell it for the, for the record. Hi, my name is Doug Massey, uh, M-A-S-S-I-E. I'm a lifelong Wasilla resident, small business owner, and former colonel director of the Alaska Wildlife Troopers, where I oversaw enforcement of wildlife habitat and fisheries in the state of Alaska. I retired in May of 2022. Um, I'm kind of the, the oddball here. I'm here in, in, in an effort to support uh, 2303 um, to provide a mechanism for review so that um, an appropriate agency or governing body can look at these uh, these proposals and these existing structures that are in, in total violation. As a trooper here in the Valley for 25 years, I can tell you there's way more than 700 violations. Up and down all the rivers in this, in this area, there's probably three times that many. And right now, um, Clearly, the borough doesn't have the staff to enforce this, and it's easy to go off and build one, and you'll never be checked. 
I mean, I've been to these places out on the rivers. I would rather see a mechanism mechanism in place where a person like me, I'm a property owner on a lake, can give you a written proposal and a plan, and you can say yes or no. It's that simple, yes or no. Uh, do I think uh, all structures should be allowed to, to uh, be built 75 feet from a waterway? No, I own property on Nancy Lake. I also own property on Knick Lake. Nancy Lake is an anadromous waterway. I, would, I wouldn't dream of building uh, close to the lake. Uh, I have a property on Knick Lake where currently my parking lot goes right up to the lake. I called the borough the other day. They said I could push gravel right up to the lakeside. So I would rather put my building closer to the lake and move my parking lot where oil and, and antifreeze and everything drains currently drains the opposite direction. I would rather it drain towards Kinnick Goose Bay Road. But my property, unfortunately, there's a 66 foot easement on KGB. There's an easement on uh, Lakeshore and there's the 75 easement, 75 foot easement. So right now, without any kind of process to have you review and approve, uh, trust me, I want, I want to protect the habitat. I build my parking lot close to the lake. So I'm asking that you take a look at this and consider some kind of process so that people are in extenuating circumstances have an option to build closer to the lake as long as they're safe and responsible. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience that wasn't signed up that would like to speak? Okay. And please state your name and spell it for the record. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair and members of the uh, Planning Commission. My name is Jim Sykes. That's S as in Superman, Y-K-E-S. And I live on Lazy Mountain. Um, I'm, uh, I'm an, an ex-officio member of the Fish and Wildlife Board. I'm not speaking for the board. I'm here on my own. And I am also an on-voting member as being ex-officio. But I just uh, wanted to hope that you had a chance to, to look at the ordinance. I, I gave you copies of what our resolution was. and. Uh, I thought it was important that you uh, have a good understanding of it. Um, I guess that I would, I think you have the opportunity to do two things at once. One is to fail the current proposal uh, before the assembly so it retains the 75 foot setback. But what the Fish and Wildlife Commission did do in handing it off to you is to try and give you the opportunity to find a path forward for some of the or, or maybe even all of them, but for, for the people who are in uh, not in compliance right now. And so um, whether that's um, having a buffer, letting wild stuff grow cl close to the lake or stream, whatever that is, we wanted to let the Planning Commission take a look at the options that you've got so that this can be a problem that is solved. And that's what, what we're aim was. <clears throat> so, um, I just want to also let you know that over the past few years, we've been very successful in trying to restore our formerly great fish runs. The restoration has gone slowly, but we have won some valuable things at the State Board of Fish, a 7-0 vote that established a conservation corridor in the middle of Cook Inlet. It appears to be working. We are getting better returns. We still don't have any way to good way to count them. We have half the number of weirs we used to be. We don't have any counters like they do in Kenai that have uh, daytime, day-by-day -day data on them. We uh, are trying to get more funding, but we have been instrumental in getting lots of funding for fish and game at, and in terms of independent studies that they can use and anybody else can use uh, to, to figure things out. <clears throat> We're about to go before the Board of Fish and next month for about seven days, there's gonna be a meeting of the federal government. It's uh, the North Pacific Fisheries Management Council that now may have management for the uh, EEZ, the exclusive economic zone, more than <clears throat> three miles offshore, which is the center of Cook Inlet, basically, below south of Calkin Island. And I just want you to keep in mind that we have done, we have established salmon crossing culverts. We have more per mile than anywhere in the US. We have got the Fish Creeks uh, fishery, the personal use fishery, up and running so that that it has uh, more opportunity than we've had in many years for Matsu people. And uh, we want to keep this going. The bottom line is we, we want to go into our next Board of Fish meeting in 2024 
and this North Pacific Fisheries Management Council by, by not having to face criticism. Oh, we see you're rolling back your 70 foot, uh, 75 foot um, setback to water and you want help from us to help restore your runs. We would really very much like to keep that thought in mind as you work to uh, come up with a solution. And uh, I thank you very much. I wish you well on your work and uh, thank you for serving. I know and, it's a very tough task. And, and Jim, yeah. um, and, and Doug both, if you guys could sign in right there in front of, is there a sign? Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Appreciate it. Yep. And I understand we have two people online. Um, go ahead. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jessica Speed, S-P-E-E-D. I'm coordinator of the Matsu Basin Salmon Habitat Partnership, and thank you for this opportunity to speak. I'm here to offer information about the partnership in service of the Planning Commission's efforts to inform your decision about OR23-03, proposing to alter current riparian setback standards. The Matsu Salmon Partnership is a voluntary and non-regulatory coalition of over 65 diverse organizations that includes Matsu Borough, Alaska Department of Fish and Game, and many more. All share a vision of thriving salmon, healthy habitats, and vibrant communities coexisting in the Matsu. Guided by a strategic action plan, we've funded over 110 salmon habitat projects in the Matsu, totaling over $4 million in direct funds, with nearly 15.5 million in other contributions. Some of those funds have gone toward conserving and restoring riparian areas, the vegetated zone where land and water meet along stream banks and lake shores. Maintaining functioning riparian areas that provide valuable salmon habitat is a priority of the partnership. These areas deliver economic, cultural, and ecological services that benefit Matsu communities. They're vital for the overall health and function of streams, providing food, shelter, and moderating stream temperatures for rearing and spawning salmon, and filter pollutants to help maintain healthy water quality. The native vegetation in these areas provides erosion control and improves flood resiliency, benefiting individual landowners and broader community. In 2020, the partnership developed a science summary for community leaders that synthesizes information on the value of riparian areas, including best practices. This was recently emailed to commission members and included in your packet. Freshwater habitat loss and fragmentation have been some of the primary drivers in the decline of anadromous fish. Based on lessons learned elsewhere, we know that maintaining these functioning habitats is far more effective and cost-effective than trying to restore them once they are degraded. Therefore, the goal of the Matsu Salmon Habitat Partnership is to maintain healthy habitat wherever possible. Salmon are a critical part of the Matsu economy, ecology, and way of life. Thank you for the Matsu Borough's long-term and award-winning investment to conserve salmon resources and the communities that depend on them. The Matsu Salmon Partnership welcomes any questions or requests for information. Thank you. Thank you. We have one more, Caleb. Go ahead. Yeah, hello. My name is Stephen Edwards, uh, E-D-W-A-R-D-S. Um, it just seems like another not so good legislation coming forward for us to gravel now this. But um, th again, this has a fairly small group of beneficiaries, and it's you know not all those ones that are noncompliant. Some of those are grandfathered, but the ones that intentionally built their house too close to the lake knowing the law and now they're what uh, is can't be sold through a bank has to be sold for cash so it has less value and now all of a sudden if this is passed then it's bank financeable and the value is increased and so you know it's just a small group i built i live on a lake i built our house and it's fully compliant with the setback because i want to be able to protect the water, but also I want to be able to sell it. So I knew that there was 75 foot and I built well back from that and I left lots of riparian buffer, all natural land, just to a trail to the lake. If my neighbor built one that's not compliant 
and it was worth less today because it has to be cash sale. I don't want it all of a sudden. I think it's unfair to all of a sudden increase its value substantially just with the wave of a wand when they intentionally created that situation. So, you know, I'm I'm protecting your water body, but let's say I all of a sudden I changed my mind. I got 1,500 feet of lakefront on a nice lake. So I'm going to walk along under this legislation. I urge you to consider this if you're changing it and the planning commission, if you're writing rules for this, consider this. I got 1,500 feet. I'm going to walk along every 150 feet. I'm going to cut some trees and commence construction, which is what it says in there. And so now I've got 10 commenced construction homes that I'm starting on. <clears throat> each one's going to be built up close to the lake. I'm going to get engineering on each one. And they're going to recommend some buffers and some swales, and it's all going to be approved. And I'm going to get a permanent compliance status for those properties. And then the day after Alex leaves, I'm going to rip all that buffer out of there, pave down to the lake, put an oil change station for my heavy equipment, my dog kennel and chicken coop on that side, and go on. And there's absolutely nothing that's going to come back on this to check on that. Once it's signed off, it's done. So I I think that process needs to have follow-up if we're going to create this path. And so, you know, the engineer comes up with a plan, it's implemented, and then it's tore out the next day because the landowner doesn't want that. So please consider that if you're going to change this. But certainly let's vote this down like it is. I urge you to, to consider what the public is asking for here. and and get rid of this. And then if you do come up with a plan through uh, planning, you know, make it a good one that has some sort of enforcement after this fact with the engineer, because it's too temporary. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else online? One last call, anybody in the assembly chambers? Is there any objection to closing public hearing? Public hearing is closed. Um, commissioners, do you have any response to the comments made during the public hearing? Okay. Uh, the chair will now entertain a motion for resolution 23-03. I think procedurally we have to have a motion, so I'll, um, I'll uh, so move for discussion purposes. Uh, can I get a second? I'll second that. Okay, it's moved and seconded. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Allen and Commissioner Glenn. Okay. Um, first and second. Is there any discussion now? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I I really appreciate the, the public testimony we received today, and I, I really appreciate the resolution by uh, the Matsu Borough Fish and Wildlife Commission. Um, I think that um, we can improve the status quo without going as far as the current resolution calls for, and I'd be happy to work with all of you and with the public to come up with some solutions. Um, to do tweaks that will, you know, hopefully solve some of these problems without um, completely getting away with the uh, doing away with this 75 foot uh, setback. I'm, I'm also, um, you know, when when the public votes on something like this, I realize that it was 1987, um, but when the public votes on something like this, um, you know, I take that really, really seriously, and I think that we have to have a really, really um, compelling reason uh, to. Uh, to reverse that, so and and I, I just haven't seen that yet. So I look forward to seeing if, um, as I said, working with everybody to see if we can come up with um, some solutions here that work for everyone. But as it's written right now, I think it's I think it's really problematic. Thanks. And uh, yeah, as I'm I'm in agreement with uh, Mr. Allen. Uh, this thing is definitely needs to be tweaked, and I'm a 
I'm opposed to the uh, getting rid of the 75 foot setback as it sits right now. And uh, I think we need to make some adjustments to this. Thank you. Commissioner Fernandez, anything? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> um, I'm in alignment with the rest of the commission members that are present today. Um, it speaks volumes to me that we have a piece of legislation that, that has stood in place and, and in law for a 50 year time period. And I think we owe it to the people of the borough to have a lot uh, a deeper look at what we have in front of us and the potential amendments that could be proposed in order to modify it so that we can make exceptions to the rule rather than make the exception the rule. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to weigh in a little bit too. Um, I, a um, couple things uh, in discussion with the um, uh, maker of uh, the assembly, um, there's probably more amendments coming and I'm not comfortable with four commissioners here making a decision on something that's probably going to be amended after it gets past us. So I would like to make a motion that we uh, postpone this time certain to our next uh, commission meeting, which is April 3rd. Did I get a second for that? I'll, uh, Commissioner Fernandez, you're all second that. Okay, Commissioner Kendi first, Mr. Fernandez second. Um, is there any discussion on that? Is there any objection? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No worries. I just wanted to state to the, the public, especially those of you who took the time to be out here today, that this really is, uh, I believe this is the right decision um, to postpone the actual vote on this ordinance until we have more commission members here. Um, it is just as unfair to ask, um, yes, the majority, but a small majority, um, of the commission members to vote on something that is going to impact our community so strongly when once again, what we'll be removing from law is that which has stood for 50 years. Thank you. And, and my motion was twofold. I don't think what we vote on tonight will be the final product when it gets to the assembly. I would like this body with all seven commissioners to vote on the final piece of legislation. So are there any objections to the motion? Hearing seen none, postponed to time certain April 3rd. And Mr. Chair, yes. Alex, Alex Strawn, Planning Director. I just want to clarify that um, I think what we'll do here is we'll put this on unfinished business. And if members of the public want to speak on it, they can do so under audience participation at the next meeting. Okay. All right. Okay, that moves us to uh, resolution 23-07, a resolution of the Mananuska Assistant and Borough Planning Commission recommending approval of an ordinance amending MSB 15.24.031, initiating and amending late management plans. Uh, Kelsey. Good evening, commissioners. Director Strawn, my name is Kelsey Anderson. Um, I'm a planner with the Matsu Borough. Um, so the resolution that you have before you is to recommend adoption of changes to lake management implement or initiation code. So really what that means, and I kind of made a cheat sheet for you in your packet, because um, the code change legislation is very busy with lots of bold words and underlined in brackets. So. Um, I just want to go with you through what the actual code changes will be. Um, and then if you have questions um, along those lines, we can go over those. But essentially, um, after going through the Beverly Lake Lake Management Plan process, um, we heard a lot of feedback from residents who went through the process and then also just going through it ourselves. The borough hadn't done a lake management plan since 2014. So um, we were kind of using it as a case study to see what could be improved upon and came up with some ideas. And then after the assembly voted on the lake management plan as amended, um, assembly member Yunt came and asked me to write up some of these ideas and we went over those. And um, the final product is what you have in your packet. So um, the new code changes, um, well, I should say the 
lake management plans, just a refresher, happen um, through community support. So they have to provide the planning department a petition that's um, signed by members of the community within 600 feet of the shoreline. If they have the correct amount of signatures, then we go to an initiation ballot sent out by mail. Um, if we get a simple majority, just over 50% of people who respond, check the box, yes, I want to initiate a lake management plan. Um, then we move forward into the public meeting process, drafting the plan, drafting the regulations. Um, for Beverly Lakes, I added a final voting process just to kind of secure that um, majority feel for wanting to move it forward for the planning commission and the assembly. Um, and then we, and then obviously you all get to vote on it and so does the assembly to adopt it into code. So um, the code changes that are in front of you are really just cleaning up the process. Um, and then there's also some changes to who can um, sign the petition and vote in the planning process. So um, the new code changes the petition process um, by changing who can sign the petition requesting that we begin this process. So instead of having it 600 feet from the shoreline, anybody in that buffer gets to sign the petition. Um, we moved it to shoreline property owner or, or shoreline property owners only. Um, and then just administratively, we also added what a full, uh, like a full explanation of what a valid petition actually means, including adding email phone numbers um, for people to be contacted during the process. And then the new code changes the first ballot process, the one that says, yes, I want our community to go through this process um, by requiring the sending the notice of a valid petition and ballot um, using certified mail. This was something that came up in the public hearings. Um, some folks didn't feel like they were properly notified, so we just felt that adding that certified mail just gives that a little bit of um, extra credibility for the borough. Um, and then also changing who can vote for initiating a lake management plan to shoreline property owners. Um, and then the new code adds clarity to the lake management plan process. So going through it, we really realized that um, our code left a lot up to just be determined by who's ever doing a lake management plan. Um, it's messy for residents and it was really messy for us to figure out exactly the right steps. So this code change actually puts um, into code all of the final steps to get a lake management plan to the point where it would come to the planning commission. So that just adds some clarity for the process. Um, so that also included requiring that a project website be created um, and that the assembly member of the district be included in all the notification. Um, adds a step-by-step -step process that details the public involvement expectations. So we put a minimum meeting requirement and some noticing details into the legislation. Um, adding that final ballot requirement, um, that would also include being mailed by certified mail. And then with that final ballot requiring not just a simple over 50%, but actually a 60% majority um, to really solidify the community's wants and just kind of make it easier to bring it forward um, to let you all know in your decision making that it has been vetted by the public. There's a vast majority in support to just kind of help the process move along a little bit easier. Um, and then finally, the code changes also um, essentially make the amendment process for lake management planning mirror the new um, process that was laid out for initiating the plan. So those are the changes. If you have any questions before um, you vote on this, I'm happy to answer. Great. Mr. Chair, this is Commissioner Rick Allen. Um, First of all, I want to say thank you for your presentation and um, and thank you for bringing this to us. I I feel like um, I mean you heard us at the last time and some of the concerns we had. And this uh, this actually deals with a lot of those concerns. And for me personally, the requiring the supermajority is a big deal. Um, I think that's good policy. I, I appreciate that. Um, I wonder, did you discuss? So one of the other things that was kind of problematic to me the last time we dealt with this was the notion that you know. 
a family that owns one lot um, on, on the lake gets one vote, but then maybe someone else who um, owns five or six lots gets five or six votes. Um, and that seemed, I guess, undemocratic to me, um, that you know, you'd have a wealthy landowner gets more votes than the simple person with their single family home. Um, was there any discussion about changing that system so that it's basically one person, one vote? Um, there was discussion about that. Um, ultimately, I moved forward with what the assembly person who asked for the legislation to go forward with. There's a lot of different ways that we could have written this. Um, but at the end of the day, you just kind of have to go with what you think is going to is going to work for people. And I will say that one of the biggest concerns that people talk about with lake management planning and the concerns that we hear in the public meetings is like shoreline erosion, property damage, that kind of thing. So if you are looking at it from a who has the most to lose in a situation where there's irresponsible use of motorized um, vehicles on the lake, it really does impact people who own more of the shoreline um, than it might people who only have a smaller lot, just based on like thinking through property damage and shoreline erosion and things like that, which is what a lot of the lake management plans are put in place to protect. So that is just one thing to consider. Any other questions? Yeah, through the chair. It, thanks for doing this, Kelsey. I appreciate it. And uh, I got I, I have some concerns about it being waters of the U.S. And that lady right there owns a chunk on the edge of Finger Lake. And yet I have as much access to that lake water as she does. And I own part of that lake, right? How are we going to manage this? And do we have any teeth? Does the borough have any teeth to do anything? Um, I could defer to John to speak to just our ability to manage uses on water bodies. Um, water bodies in Alaska are public resources. We all get to play on them. We get to enjoy them. We have two and along easements that allow us to get to them and around them. So um, it is a bigger conversation about how we recreate. Um, and I think there's a bigger difference between something like Beverly Lake that's walk-in only in 42 acres versus Big Lake with multiple boat launches and um, is a huge community asset for all of us. So, um, but we, it's hard to write legislation f for the Big Lake and the Beverly Lake. So I think we just have to do our best to make sure that the things that we write fall under borough code to be able to enforce. And so if John wants to speak to the waters of the U.S. or anything like that, that'd be helpful. Uh, John Ashmore, Deputy Borough Attorney. So, microphone. Borough microphone. Uh, John Ashmore, Deputy Borough Attorney. So the borough uh, voted to uh, grant the Matsu Borough Assembly the power to regulate uh, water bodies. It's contained in the borough uh, the article uh, one, uh, just one second here. One ten one seven zero. So uh, the, the borough has the power in terms of regulation and uh, you know how that will be carried out. I think uh, the planning director can speak to uh, you know the the staff uh, it would take or takes to uh, engage in uh, enforcement of uh, land use regulations related to water bodies. <laughs> Is that something the board would like me to talk yeah, about? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Please. All right. So Alex Strawn, planning director. So, um, so we don't have a, a team of you know uh we don't we don't have a fleet of of jet skis to go chase people down uh, when it comes to enforcement of lake management plans um but we do a lot of times a lake will have a dock where we can uh we definitely post signs informational signs hoping people will follow the regulations 
Um, if we do get a complaint that there's somebody out there, um, we do have now a code enforcement officer on every day of the week. Um, so we, uh, we could accept complaints and potentially go uh, uh, see where somebody parks their jet ski or if they if we see that they have a, a, a trailer at the at the public boat launch we could go do uh, wait for them there um, and potentially issue a citation so uh, we do have enforcement and we do as John said have the power as a second class borough we were given the power through uh, a vote of the people uh, to to regulate water bodies and so just like you know we do regulate the state of alaska if they're going to do a gravel pit or you know we we can regulate uh private property as well as public property um and this is this is one of the ones where we do that so i just have a quick question alex when, when we're talking about uh, compliance uh does code compliance work saturday and sunday we do have a code compliance officer on every day of the week now okay Are there any other questions for staff? Okay, at this time, I'd like to open a public hearing on resolution 23-07. And I have a sign up sheet here, Jean Holt. Hi, my name's Jean Holt. Uh, I live on Finger Lake and I'm in favor of this uh, ordinance. I'm glad to see that the borough took the initiative to make a standard standards of um, lake management plans. I sure hope, I mean, I realize this is basic, but um, you guys have a lot in front of you to do. And um, so I am in favor of this, this uh, ordinance. 2307 and um, boy, I wish uh, the other ordinance could be like this because you got a lot on your plate. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Chair. Um, so we have uh, the phones dropped off, so we're gonna have to reconnect that. Okay, we're just gonna take a brief out of these till, till we get that reconnected. And I, I will remind uh, people who testify, if you could please sign up um, at the, the sign-in sheet at the podium when you speak. Even the ones that signed this one? She signed this one. Welcome to the Synexus Conference Manager. Please enter. Joining conference. Do we have anybody online? Okay. If there's anybody online that wishes to speak to ordinance 23-07, uh, please raise your hand. Oh, I'm sorry. We still have one in here. Um, Eileen Probasco. And Eileen, if you could sign in at the podium. Okay, thank you. Um, again, I'm Eileen Probasco. I am. Um, I didn't come here planning on speaking on this tonight, but I do have a couple of tidbits I'd just like to share. And I appreciate that every time this topic comes up before the Planning Commission and Assembly, there's a there's a, a lot of questions and uh, you know how well, what should the process be? How to who has the right to initiate things and. Um, we went from the just lakefront property owners to 600 feet, and they talked about that a little bit. They also, um, as um, Commissioner Glenn mentioned, um, it's important to keep in mind that just by initiation of the people around the lake is not the only way that something can happen 
to how the lake is used, which is what lake management plans are, just the surface of the water. It doesn't have anything to do with the land around it or setbacks or whether you can have a greenhouse or a dog sled or whatever. It's just how the surface of the lake is used for the lake management plans. But Commissioner Glenn was right. It is a public water body. And um, if you happen to have a group of people uh, that come forward with a legitimate request for a lake management plan um, and some regulations attached to it, you need to keep in mind that there might be a group of members from the public that own property just beyond that 600 feet or whatever the boundary is, or some people that use that lake regularly that have just as much a right to bring forward a request to the planning commission and or assembly to say, hey, you know, we need to be involved in this discussion. And um, so I think that's important. Um, I respect all the work that the, the staff has done on this because it has always been kind of a, um, just a challenging issue to deal with. And um, we also need to remember that the assembly as the governing body of, of the borough and um, that oversees the planning commission and the staff and so forth, um, if, if one of those assembly members decides they wanna bring something forward, they certainly have the right to do that, whether or not there's a, a petition from the public, as just has Mr. Yant and Mr. Tu brought forward their um, setback regulation. They have the authority to do that. And they, the hope would be they'd listen to the public and stuff, and certainly they do, I know that they do that. But if, if everybody sitting up there decides that they want to do something, um, that's within their authority to do it. So kind of got off the topic and I apologize for that. As I said, staff has done a really good job of doing what they've been asked to do and it's really a challenging topic. So um, thank you, that's all. Thank you. Okay, anybody online? Nobody's raised their hand? Okay. Um, seeing, hearing no other person to be heard. Is there any objection to closing public hearing? Public hearing's closed. And uh, Ms. An Ms. Anderson, do you have any, uh, any response to the comments made during the public hearing? Okay. Um, we'll entertain a motion. Where am I? Uh, uh, Chair will now entertain a motion for 23-07. Uh, this is Commissioner Allen. I will move uh, that we adopt 23-07. And Commissioner Glenn, I'll second that. Commissioner Allen made the motion. Commissioner Glenn, second. Um, any discussion? Did I hear maybe possible amendments or? <laughs> Yes, um, I, you know, much like we did in, the, in 2303, um, I think this is an important matter and uh, it would be my preference that we uh, postpone voting on this until um, uh, we have some more members uh, present. I think it's an important thing. Um, but I'd also, I'm gonna, uh, I have an amendment in mind, um, sort of along the lines of, of the question that I asked staff, um, but I would like to, do a little more research on my own and, and vet that a little more um, and think about it a little more because she made some great points. Um, but uh, I, 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 I think I'd like to have a little more time before we give a final uh, up or down on this. Thank okay, you. so is that a motion to postpone the time certain uh, that would be April 3rd or next meeting? Y yes, sir, I'll do that. Um, I, I'd go ahead and, unless anyone else had other discussion, uh, I'd move that we postpone this till the April 3rd meeting Alex, I see in unfinished you. business in the same manner as we did the last. Oh, I see uh, it's procedure, I think here. I see Alex rubbing his beard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Alex. Chair, Alex, Alex Strong, Planning Director. Um, I was just thinking about if somebody wanted to comment on both of these again, they would have three minutes to comment on um, the two different ordinances if we were to put them both on unfinished business. I think that's okay. Just want to let you know that's gonna, sort of going to be the outcome. You're going to split oh, that three minutes. Okay, I still need a second for his uh, motion to postpone. We got a... And Commissioner Glenn seconded. Is there any discussion? Is there any objection? Hearing, seeing none. 
a motion carries. We'll at 2307 is postponed till April 3rd meeting. Um, any correspondence and information? Unfinished business. <coughs> New business. Commission business. Yes, Mr. Chair, Alex Strawn. Uh, just uh, uh, as a courtesy, we put upcoming uh, agenda items in your packet, um, just so you get an idea of what's coming uh, before you in the future and uh, to see what quasi-judicial items are out there that you should not be discussing. <laughs> and uh, so uh, happy to answer any questions on that or, um, yeah, provide information. Okay. Um, director and commissioner comments. Oh, we had a uh, director comment. Commissioner comments. Well, I, I just want to bring up something that came along. Um, now, we, we all know quasi judicial, there's no discussion. Uh, we can't have any discussion, but it brought my attention. If it's legislative, and let's just say, for instance, there was something on my mind, and I called two commissioners. We're, that's allowed. It's only three. We're not breaking the Open Meetings Act. But what I maybe just, just saying that scenario, I failed to mention to the other two commissioners not to call another commissioner because that's an extenuating discussion, and that would break the Open Meetings Act. So I just wanted to because it, it really hadn't occurred to me to make those statements if I did make those calls. And I just want to make sure that everybody's aware of that. Any, um, anybody else? Okay, uh, motion to adjourn. Alan, I'll move to adjourn. Okay, we're adjourned at 722.